Hello everyone and welcome to QuantPy. We invested time to understand the HJM framework and we are now entitled to some rewards and in this video we're going to see one of those rewards when we show how easy and informative it is to derive the complicated looking drift of the extensions of the short rate models they try to fit the initial term structure. These are the likes of the Ho and Lee extension of the Merton and the Hull and White extensions of the Wazicek and the CIR. For the context, there are three classic short rate models Merton, which models the short rate as an arithmetic Brownian motion, Wazicek, which models it as an Ornstein Hullenbeck process, and the CIR then adds the square root of R to the diffusion term. You can view the Merton as a wild animal. So the longer you leave it outside, the more uncertain you are going to be as to where to find it. Let's see how it looks like for a hypothetical set of parameters. Let's say the current value of the short rate is 1%, the volatility is 1%, and let's say the drift is 50 basis points per year. So the mean of the distribution will grow by 1% every two years to 6% by year 10. The variance will also grow with the time because uh, we know it's like a linear transformation of the Brownian whose variance we know grows with the length of the horizon. If you were to plot the distribution, then you would see that the mean of the distribution is shifting upwards because of the positive drift that we assumed and the distribution is flattening because the variance is growing and we know large variance means a flatter distribution. From a look at the historical values of the major indices and the forward guidance of the central banks, it's easy to tell that these distributions don't give a realistic description of the interest rate of the major economies. So what Wazicek did was to introduce the mean reversion mechanism. So the mean now has got the long term mean, which is the theta, and the mean reversion parameter, which is the alpha. The diffusion term is introducing the shocks. But the mean reversion mechanism is uh, now forcing the short rate towards the long term mean. Let's see how this looks like for a comparable set of parameters. So let's say the current value of the short rate is 1%, the volatility is 1%, and the long term mean now is uh, 6%, and the mean reversion parameter is 10%. So the mean of the distribution is growing towards the long term mean now instead of drifting blindly in one direction and the variance is growing at a decreasing rate so it's got a limiting value now and if you were to plot the distribution of the short rate now it looks a, a lot more realistic than what we saw before. One problem with the Wazicek at least from the historical perspective is that the diffusion term doesn't know anything about the current value of the short rate so for large negative shocks the short rate can become negative which was considered unrealistic back then. So what CIR did was to add the square root of R to the diffusion term. And now the diffusion term is in a way proportional to the square root of R. So it won't become negative for reasonable set of parameters. And for this very reason, the CIR was once considered the cat's whiskers. And nowadays it's the opposite. So you will see people trying to apply fudges to the CIR types model so that they can handle the negative interest rate and it tells you a lot about the term structure universe it's very hard to hold on to the throne one problem that's common to all of them is uh, that they have a limited number of parameters so if you calibrate these models they won't be able to to fit the initial term structure so there would be an arbitrage between the market and the model and what ho and lee realized is that you can make these models fit the initial term structure by making the drift a function of time. They did their analysis in discrete settings, but if you apply their thinking in continuous time, then the drift function comes out to be this function. And then Hull and White realized that you can do the same to the Wazicek and the CIR. The drift function for the Wazicek takes this form, and we shall see very shortly how to derive this expression for the CIR. There are several ways to derive these drift functions, but the derivation through the HJM is uh, very informative, so this is the approach we are going to use. It so happens that if you substitute the constant volatility into the HJM framework, 
then you will get the ho and li drip and if you substitute this function for the volatility then you get the wazi check and there's a similar expression for the cir now you are going to be wondering how these expressions come about so to show that these are not just rabbits out of the hat so let's explain how you can deduce these expressions and to do so let's go back to the classic short rate models we know the price of the zero coupon under all of them is given by this formula where a and b of course differ by the model we have derived both of them on the website so if you are curious then please do visit the quantpy website but for now we are only going to be needing the b's so i'm going to write only the b's so the b for the merton model looks like this for the wazi check it is slightly more complicated and slightly more so for the cir so now we're going to deduce the dynamics of the hjm using this pricing formula so essentially what's happening is this function provides us a link between the short rate and the zero coupon and then we know that we can use the price of the zero coupon to deduce the dynamics of the instantaneous forward which is the main object in the HJM settings. We know from the previous video that we can write the instantaneous forward as a function of the zero coupon which we can write in differential form as well. And now this is the expression that we're gonna use to infer the HJM dynamics. Let's take log of both sides to simplify the exponential. And now let's take differential of both sides, where we just applied the Eto's lemma to a function which is a function of the deterministic t as well. The quadratic term doesn't feature because the second derivative with respect to the r is zero. And the capital T is fixed for now because we are talking about the price of the same zero coupon. Let's abbreviate the A's and B's, where the subscript T represents the derivative with respect to T. Now, for the term structure, we we'll need to know how this changes with the capital T, and this captured by the fact that the differential of the forward is equal to the derivative of this with respect to the capital T. So let's differentiate. Now the last term is the differential of the short rate, and we know under all three of them is equal to a drift term and a diffusion term. Now for the HJM, the only thing that matter is the coefficient of the Brownian. So we can combine the DT terms under the dots. And now if you compare this to the HJM dynamics, then we can see that the coefficient of the diffusion and the HJM is equal to the coefficient of diffusion in the short rate times the derivative of b with respect to the capital T. So if we know the volatility of the short rate SDE and the function b, then we can deduce the volatility of the instantaneous forward SDE. Let's do it for the three classic. So we know the dynamics of the short rate under Merton and the function b, which we can differentiate with respect to the capital T. So now if we substitute the volatility from the short rate and this derivative into the expression, then we get the constant sigma as we saw before. For the Wazicek, we know the differential of the short rate and we know the function b, which we can differentiate with respect to the capital T. And now we can substitute the volatility and this derivative into the expression and we get the expression that we saw earlier. For the CIR, again we know the differential of the short rate and we know the function b and we are going to leave the rest of the derivation as an exercise. So now that we know where the rabbits came from, so let's substitute these to deduce the drift term. We will start with the ho and li. Let's reproduce the dynamics of the HJM under the risk neutral measure. For the ho and li, we know we will need to substitute a constant sigma. So let's substitute this constant sigma into the HJM differential. We can take the sigma out of the integral because it doesn't depend on the integrating variable. And we can evaluate the integral. It is just equal to the length of the interval. Now to solve this differential, we will integrate where the first integral is essentially the derivative of minus x square divided by 2. 
and we can evaluate the expression at the upper and lower integration limits where we use the fact that the Brownian motion starts at zero so W naught is equal to zero. Now we have all the ingredients to deduce the dynamics of the short rate from the dynamics of the instantaneous forward. So we know from the previous video that the differential of the short rate is equal to the differential of the forward with respect to the first parameter and the differential with respect to the second parameter both evaluated at small t. So we will need to differentiate the second with respect to the capital T and then evaluate both of them at small t. Now we can substitute these into the short rate differential equation. And now we see that we get the Merton model where the drift is now a function of time. And this is the same function that we saw earlier. As we deduce the drift function from the HJM dynamics, which we know matches the initial term structure by definition. So if you use this function for the drift, then the short rate model will match the initial term structure, which was the main weakness of the Merton, which the Ho and Lee solves. Let's move to the extended Vasicek check now. So again, let's reproduce the dynamics of the HJM under the risk neutral measure. For the extended Vasicek, we know that the sigma function is given by this. As the first integral involves this function at u instead of capital T, let's write it explicitly, where we just replace the capital T with u to make things easier. Now we can substitute these expressions into the HJM dynamics. So let's evaluate the integral of the exponential now. So it's essentially equal to the same exponential divided by the coefficient of the integrating variable. We can evaluate the expression at the upper and lower integration limits. And we can take the minus sign inside the brackets now. Let's substitute this back into the differential. And we can take the exponential inside the bracket to simplify the terms. Now to solve this expression, we will just integrate and we know how to evaluate the integral of the exponentials and let's evaluate the expressions at the upper and lower integration limits. Now we have all the ingredients that we need to deduce the differential of the short rate, but let's take a brief digression and let's see how the short rate process looks like. So we know the short rate is equal to the instantaneous forward for maturity at that very instant. So we will just need to substitute the small t for capital T. And we can align the denominators of the two expression inside the first bracket. And now 2 minus 1 equals 1, so this simplifies. So now what we have to do as we did for the Ho and Lee, So we will need to take the derivative of the second with respect to the capital T. And then evaluate both expression at small t. Which we then simplify, the ones cancel. And now we can substitute these into the expression that links the differential of the short rate and the differential of the forwards. And now we will factor the alpha to make it more comparable to the Vazicek. Now this pretty much looks like the Vazicek, but the last term inside the drift has got this uh, integral with respect to the Brownian. Remember when we solve for the short rate, we got the same term. So what we can do is we can isolate this one on the left hand side. And now we can write this expression in terms of the terms on the right hand side. And now this is exactly the Vazicek model where the drift is now a function of time. Again, because we deduce this drift from the HJM settings, which matches the initial term structure by definition. So if we use this function for the drift, then the model will match the initial term structure, which again was the main weakness of the Vazicek. Now you can apply the same procedure to the CIR. We already know the short rate dynamics and the function b. We're gonna leave this as an exercise but if you're finding it hard then please let us know and we will try to answer any questions you might have. Right, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next. 
when we consider the HJM and discrete settings and which will ease our transition to the LIBOR market model.